Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Nick. Okay. Origo Energy. We are developing fuel cell systems. Origo is a constellation, Greek constellation for the charioteer, so it seemed appropriate. And fuel cells were invented 150 years ago or so by a lawyer, would you believe, Sir William Grove. Basically, it's a reverse electrolysis. And you remember electrolysis in school where you stick two electrodes in a beaker of water, pass electricity through it, and it breaks up into hydrogen and oxygen. So if you bring hydrogen and oxygen together through a catalyst, a platinum-based catalyst most of the time, you can recreate water and liberate electrons, so you have power. But it's been a long time since the fuel cell as a technology was invented, and it hasn't quite got to a commercial state. And that's mainly due to materials technology. It only became a viable product in the late 50s when materials were right, and a lot of investment went into it in the 60s from the space program. And a lot of the manned missions had fuel cells on board in the Gemini missions and in the Apollo missions for a starter. So that brought the technology up to speed with the modern world, and the materials followed on to make it into a commercial reality. The fuel for a hydrogen fuel cell is hydrogen, and hydrogen is the most common element in the universe. So there's plenty of it around. We're not going to run out. It's a sustainable future. But what's missing is that it's a chemistry kit. There's been a lot of investment by venture capital firms and by various investment houses into the chemistry of the fuel cell, which is making the catalyst work, passing the gas over the microns in the catalyst and producing the electricity. But no one buys a chemistry kit. They buy a power system that you can plug into whatever you want to use. So what's been missing, and this has been stated by a lot of fuel cell manufacturers and designers coming out of universities, is that they've lacked the system engineering skills, the system integration skills to take it to the end user. So we like to try and fill that gap, and that's where we've placed ourselves. The market opportunity has been created by the concern on climate change that's been mentioned in the last presentation. The need for sustainable development, and as I said, hydrogen is available everywhere, and we can produce hydrogen quite easily and cheaply. We also need independence of oil supplies and gas supplies from unstable regimes. We don't want to have to fight more wars for our power, so we can become self-sustaining again in the future. There are a whole bunch of government initiatives coming out every day, and this morning there was one in relation to achieving 90 percent reductions in our carbon outputs. The EU launched a post-industrial revolution in January 2007, which is about the time when I left my job and started this up, so that was very nice of Jose Manuel Barroso to do that for me. And that gave a commitment at EU level to carbon reductions, and he called it a post-industrial revolution because there is also a need to create a whole bunch of new industries for the future, create employment as the older industries die out or they go to cheap labor sources out in the developing parts of the world. The UK passed its Climate Change Act last November, which is the first country to make a legal commitment, which means we are all bound to produce the 80 percent reductions that have been legalized now. And today the discussion is about 90 percent just to allow us to continue flying, and I quite like flying, as Nick mentioned, so this is all good news for us. So whatever the recession has done to the UK economy, the world economy is still growing. Elsewhere in the world it's coming up very fast, in China, in Africa, in India, and South America for a start. And that's created a potential for a five billion pound market for these products, if we can get them out there to the market. So we've been very market focused in trying to establish our technologies and take it to the world, and that's where we've started. So who are we? Well, my colleagues and I have a background in the space and defense industries. I used to work in BAE Space Systems, which went through a couple of name changes to Matra Marconi Space and Astrium by the time we finished. And then I joined a company called SEA, Systems Engineering and Assessment, and went into the underwater defense world. And my fellow directors, Phil Johnston, 
runs a company called Trackwise, make the mobile phone antennas that we all use, and he's won the Queen's Award in running that company. My background comes out of the space industry where we built satellites, and we built the biggest satellites ever been built here in Bristol, and I started on that project as an analyst and finished on it as project manager. Phil Locke is our non-executive director and provides a guiding hand to do that. In addition, because we are at the system engineering and we need a whole range of skills, and I have eight guys helping out on a variety of skills that are needed to put systems together and to bring out new innovations to take this technology to the market to help deliver the greenhouse reduction targets. So that's us. So what is a fuel cell system? This is a bit too quick. The fuel cell stack is supplied as a chemistry kit. There are a number of suppliers in the world that are developing that, and that, as I said, is not where we are working because that is a technology where a lot of investment has gone and is being developed. But you don't buy the fuel cell stack, and you don't plug that into anything that you use. What you plug into is a system which works with the power requirements that you need, and what you need in there is the fuel. The fuel comes out of hydrogen, and that has to be regulated, purged, and put in at the right pressure, right purity. At the moment, we are storing the hydrogen in gas bottles, and there are newer technologies coming along, which I'll talk about soon. Oxygen comes out of the air, and that needs to be pressurized and humidified and put into the fuel cell to stop it drying out. For the higher power units, they have to be cooled, and then the power has to be managed, and that's the blue box, and that's where we sit. So that's the complexity that's missing out of the fuel cell developers themselves, the chemistry kit developers. And so we sit in the blue box. The fuel cell stack itself can be supplied by a whole bunch of people. We're using Ballard's. We're the world leaders in this PEM fuel cells. We're also in discussion with ACAL Energy. It's a strange machine. We'll cope. ACAL Energy is a Liverpool University offshoot. They're developing a fuel cell stack which doesn't use platinum and uses an alternative chemistry. Kinetic have offered us their fuel cell to work with, and we're always in discussion with Intelligent Energy as a Loughborough offshoot. Rolls-Royce are developing, Rolls-Royce Marie fuel cell systems are developing fuel cell stacks at the megawatt level to be able to power complete industrial sites or buildings and offices. And these are companies that we're all collaborating with at a certain level, and in the future we'll be extending our collaboration to be able to supply our systems to them or use their fuel cells as part of our systems. So our intellectual property sits in that overlying ring there where we are developing the system controller which houses our control algorithms. That defines all of the ancillary equipment and the sensors and the actuators that go with it, which stores the energy in supercapacitors or batteries, and we've also developed our own DC-DC converters for this purpose. So to store hydrogen is one of the major challenges, and we're in collaboration with Professor Guo at UCL and supported him in a lot of his research applications to develop that technology where you can actually store the hydrogen encapsulated within metal hydrides so you can reduce the volume of the storage system and get more mileage in car terms out of your hydrogen storage volume that's available. So what are we doing? We're developing high-efficiency fuel cell systems to bring together all the key interrelated requirements and make sure that the system works at its maximum efficiency, is maintained within its limits to extend its life, and make sure that you get what you pay for. We optimize each system for its end load. There is no such thing as a fuel cell system which you just buy off the shelf, plug it in, and it will work for whatever you want to plug it into. Every application is optimized, and therefore that's what our algorithms do. And what that leads to is lower fuel consumptions and longer life, and that is what everybody is looking for in anything we buy in life. You see a screenshot of one of our control panels there, which is where our software is operated from. 